So this will be a test for Akinema Orion. So first I'll be setting up what type of configuration I have. The HMD and hand controllers. Because I have the headset, the two controllers, the two controllers on my feet and one on my hip. Make sure I put the viewport open and just kind of set that up to where I want it to be. Go down to options. Make sure Vive Record is on. You can name this whatever you would like so you can know what it is later. I'll be naming this Orion Test 01. Output Skeleton. I'm not going to worry about this information right now. I just want to make sure that it's recording to FBX. I'm going to make a 10 second delay recording. Go to close and now I'm going to go ahead and put the headset on. As you can see, I have the vibe trackers on me already. The thing with Orion is that it will not work with the Steam VR engine open. I know that you can't see what's in my headset right now, but Steam VR Home cannot be open when using Orion for some reason. They just won't work together. That means you don't have the option to view the character through your headset. I guess if you want to go the Unreal or Unity route, you would be able to do so. You would be able to do so through the Ikenema plugin. You can use that to view through the character's eyes, but that would be a whole nother program that you would have to buy and learn. So for the purpose of this video, I would keep the headset on my head above my eyes. I think if I leave my headset up like this, the character would think it's looking up all the time. So I think I may still have to put the headset over my eyes. Okay, so you hit the start motion capture pipeline and then you should start seeing the controllers on the viewport. It looks like my antivirus program is trying to block Orion. I'm just going to have to unblock Orion for the antivirus program. Just ignore that part for a moment. So it asks for a calibration. As you can see the controllers, it looks like the window is viewing me from the side. I want to change that so I can view you straight ahead for other character. So I can see what's going on. So I'm just going to rotate the view. So I'm just going to rotate the viewport the way I want to see it. Then hit record FBX to start recording everything. Record FBX. Here goes the countdown, get into your T-pose, and there you go, I'm in. The thing with Orion though is that you have to hold the controllers a certain way. I, I think you have to hold the controllers the same way as if you're playing a game. So if I turn my wrist like this, like I would naturally be if I was in the T-pose. This way how the wrist would be. Like you can't change the controls or it would affect the wrist. It must it must be like this. Okay, I'm going to rotate around a little bit. Yes, the controllers have to be sideways, even in the A pose, they would be like this. So I'm going to do a little bit of range of motion. So, I can, so it seems to mirror what you do. It's not exact like left, up, left hand up, right hand up kind of thing. If I look at my head, it does move forward. It does not look like it's doing position tracking with the head, only the rotation. Do a little bit of twist motion. It looks like my hips are staying in place and my upper chest is rotating even though I don't have the tracker up here. Now I know I have tested this with Bruckle before and not using the chest tracker in any other capturing program the chest and hip rot rotates together. So if you're not using Orion you may definitely need the fourth tracker on your chest. 
one, two, three, and four. With our iron, you get the shoulder motion. Walk around. You have to watch out for that cord. Another option for Orion is that you do not have to use the headset. If you have an extra tracker, you can place the tracker on your head and then you can have wireless motion capture. And you will not be tethered to your cord, so that would be an option. I did not want to do that because if I wanted to use the extra tracker for the chest, I could. And so then I have to use the HMD for head tracking. A little bit of good rotation on the foot, feet. And it places the knee pretty good on where it needs to be. And the elbows, even though there are no elbow trackers. It's kind of weird to do certain hand motions. Because as you can see, your hands are in one position, but the controllers are in another position. So you have to extend your sense of perception of your hands to your controllers. So the hands of the characters is actually the controller, not your actual hands. So there will be a little bit of an issue there. So there is a little bit of an issue with the hips when I've been down. So Orion is actually pretty good. I mean, for not having any trackers on your arms or your elbows or your knees and chest and shoulders, this is actually pretty good. I have one, two, three, four, five, six trackers total. I think that's five headsets and the Vive system costs about $5.99 now by itself. These trackers are about $100 each by themselves, so that would be $6.99, $7.99, $8.99, so actually about 4 so that would be $9.99, so that would be $1,000 for a motion capture system. And then you would have to pay $500 a year for Orion. That's not bad. I'll be comparing all of this to iPodSoft. iPodSoft standard license, I believe, is $375 a year. All of this does not sound too bad if you're doing this professionally. If you're more of a hobbyist and you don't use it that often, you may run into the issue of your license running out at the end of the year before you know it. And then you have to pay another $375. And then you have to pay again when you are ready to use the software. Whereas with Orion, it's pretty much the same, but it's a little bit more expensive at $500 a year. Which compared to iPodSoft really seems like a way better option. Plus the cost of hardware for iPodSoft is a lot cheaper as well. I think you can go to Connect360 route and I think you can get, it, get them off of eBay or you can go to a local GameStop and you can get a used Connect for maybe 30, 40 or 50 bucks. So that will be 60 to a hundred dollars and you need to get the old one with the power adapter and maybe some cheap tripods as well. I think I got my tripods off of Amazon for maybe $23 each. So if you round it up to $25 each, that would be a total of $150 compared to $1,000 for the Vive setup plus $500 a year for Orion. So I'm not sure if I'd be paying $500 a year for it. Apple also has a three month rental service where you could pay three months for service. That's a pretty good idea. I have used that option before, but again, if you don't use it every day, you run into the issue of running out of time. If you don't have the dedicated three months to record, by the time you are finished recording and capturing, then you come back later and after your license expires and realize that you have some mistakes in your recording and you have to go back and do it again.
I see there are some something weird going on with my hips right now. I'm not sure what that is. It may have something to do with the heater that's on. Give me one moment while I go turn that off. That doesn't seem to do anything. I wonder if my track on my hip is off a little. I'm still not sure why the hips are off center like that. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe once I export it into my 3D package of choice, I can look into it more and do some cleanup. There's something else you have to worry about. AppleSoft does uh AppleSoft does help with a lot of cleanup where it appears uh there would be a lot of cleanup to be done with Orion as well. The next video I'll be using Brickle Open VR Recorder and I'll be comparing it directly to AppleSoft where I'll be recording both of them at the same time.